Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. This is a continuation of the video where I explain different methods for sampling a hemisphere. We do this in order to pre-filter an environment cube map that will be used for image-based lighting. In that video we looked at the diffuse component of pre-filtering and we discussed three different methods that numerically evaluate this integral which calculates the total light contribution of the hemisphere using Lambert's diffuse BRDF. One of the methods that we looked at was random sampling. While we used uniform values for phi, we didn't do so for theta. Instead, we used this relation to map the uniform random values to a non-uniform branch for theta. I mentioned that we can get these equations using the theory of important sampling, which also determines how we should evaluate the integral using a discrete sum as we see here in the shader code. Although we didn't end up using this method for pre-filtering the diffuse component, we are going to use important sampling for the specular part. And in preparation, I'd like to give a brief introduction to this method and also show you how we arrive at these results. Before discussing the theory of important sampling, Let's first have a look at the Riemann sum again, which was also introduced in the previous episode. Here I explained that an integral of a function corresponds to the area that's enclosed between the function and the horizontal axis within a given interval between A and B. The space between A and B is also called the integration domain. The Riemann sum states that this area can be approximated by dividing the interval into subintervals and adding up the areas of all rectangles. The higher the number of samples, the closer the approximation will be to the actual area. The samples are taken sequentially using a fixed interval. This is basically a constant resolution at which we evaluate this integral. However, sometimes we'd like to use a higher resolution for parts of the graph that have a higher contribution to the result and are therefore more important than parts that contribute less. Think, for example, of the lighting samples at a grazing angle to the plane, whose contribution to the total lighting is next to nothing, and we wouldn't want to waste computing power for those samples. Alternatively, we can take random samples at variable intervals, and we want to distribute our samples in such a way that they are more concentrated around areas with higher importance. This is called important sampling, which actually looks very much similar to the Riemann sum. In fact, if we take 1 over b minus a for the p of x function, we get back exactly the Riemann sum. However, this time the samples are taken at random positions instead of sequentially. p of x is a function that determines how probable it is to take a sample at a random location. The challenge is therefore to find a p of x that leads to the closest approximation of the integral. We can see that if we take the function itself and divide it by the integral and use that as p of x, we get the exact result. This means that whatever we choose for p of x, it will give us better results if it resembles f of x. Now let's consider a die which has 6 numbers on it. So rolling any number has a chance of 1 in 6. The sum of all probabilities is 1 over 6 times 6, which equals 1. This makes sense because we always get a number when we roll a die. So the probability of getting any number is always 1. Similarly, the p of x should always yield a sample within the integration interval, and that means that the sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1. Since p determines the density of samples within the integration domain, it's called the probability density function, or PDF for short. Now let's see how we can use this to evaluate the diffuse integral expressed in polar coordinates. We've already seen this integral when we used discrete sampling in the previous episode. For important sampling, we can identify this part to be the f function, and therefore the integral can be approximated using this sum. Also, now the function parameters are phi and theta, so we have f of phi and theta and p of phi and theta instead of x. We just saw that p should closely follow f, where f consists of the cube map that we want to sample, the cosine attenuation and the area element in polar coordinates. 
Obviously, we don't know the behavior of L, which is different for each image that we want to pre-filter, but we can choose a P of theta and phi that follows this part. So we can take the sine and cosine of theta multiplied by a constant. Note that this expression doesn't depend on phi, and therefore we can split it into two functions that depend on each parameter. P of theta depends only on theta and is multiplied by a constant. And P of phi is just a constant. This makes sense because the sample importance in the direction of phi is the same for all values of phi, and therefore it should be sampled uniformly. We know that the integral of P should be equal to 1, so we can use this to find these constants. This is fairly easy, and evaluating these integrals we get 2 for c theta and 1 over 2 pi for c phi. I'm gonna assume that you already know how to solve integrals analytically, which is a topic in calculus and I'm not going to discuss that here in this video. Using these constants, p of theta equals 2 times cosine theta sine theta, and p of phi equals 1 over 2 pi. Now, instead of taking the integral over the entire domain for each parameter, we can also look at how the integration result behaves as a function of that parameter. We can figure that out easily by integrating from 0 until some random theta and some random phi. We can see that for theta, the integration result behaves as the square of the sine of theta. For phi, it behaves as a constant. These functions are known as cumulative distribution functions, or CDFs. Now please pay attention to the fact that for any random theta or phi within the integration domain, both of these functions return a random value between 0 and 1. So we can use this in reverse in order to map random values between 0 and 1 to random values for theta and phi in the integration domain. And that's how we arrive at those equations that I showed in the start of the video. You can find more about this process by looking up the term inverse transform sampling. Now that we know the probability distribution function, we can fill it in this sum. We can see that all these terms cancel out and we are left with a simple sum of all sampled pixel values on the hemisphere divided by the number of samples where the samples are taken at angles theta and phi using these relations. As you'd expect, this is just the average of the sampled pixel values. And this is exactly what we implemented in the shader code here. Hopefully now you've got a better understanding of important sampling if you hadn't already, and that my explanation wasn't too difficult to follow. You can also find an excellent introduction to important sampling in this video, which I'd like to recommend for watching. The next step is to perform the same pre-filtering for the specular component, which involves evaluating this integral for the cook torrents specular BRDF. In the next video, I'm going to discuss how we can apply important sampling to estimate this integral. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thank you.